Yo, 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 what's up, you guys? It's K-State here, and let's make some melodic dubstep. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. I originally planned for this video to do just to sound design every layer from scratch with processing um, for you guys, but I started realizing that's like seven layers of chords, bass, and textures, and not even including melody and effects and other things. I just realized that video would take probably like two hours to do just to sound design all those things from scratch and explain it while doing it. I could do it much quicker, but explaining it takes, I, it wouldn't be useful. So I just wanted to get you guys information quickly. So what we're going to do is I'm going to explain the processing, my group processing, the processing individually on every layer. And just so you can kind of get an idea of uh, what I'm doing. And uh, because again, because I'm not going to sound design all these from scratch, um, all the presets come from my massive serum bank, which is on my website now. If you're curious to where those come from, that's where those come from. But uh, let's get started. So we will do a playthrough of each of the elements one by one, but I want to talk about the group processing because that's really, really important to this. So my group processing rack right here, you can see has three things really going on. So it has my filter EQ section, which I don't have an EQ yet. I just have a filter, which is the wow filter. And all the filter is doing is, uh, the wow filter is doing is just filtering, low passing, I don't know, 12 dB slope. So there's no overdrive, no resonance, nothing. I'm not using this as an effect plugin. I'm using it just as a filter. So that leads us to the next group, which is um, a multiband compressor and two sidechain compressors. So I have this in a nice little rack because I just like to have my all my compression in one little rack. So I have the OTT, which I'll get to in a second. You guys have heard me talk about this setting. It's a multiband compression setting called over the top. But we'll come back to this because something really important is happening right here with these two compressors. So I'm side chaining one compressor to the kick and another to the snare. So that way everything, keep in mind this is all my group, so it's playing on top of my chords, my bass, my textures, everything I have in here. Let's just go ahead and play this on and off so you can get what I mean. So hopefully you heard why the sidechain in melodic dubstep or dubstep or most of these kind of step genres really rely on this sort of long sustained held out kind of groove, in this case with chords, um, to have a very strong sidechain presence. So if we look at both of these sidechain compressors, the settings are pretty similar. The ratios are around the same place. The attacks are around the same place. These are default settings. The only thing I'm really doing is making sure that uh, one is going is taking signal from the kick and another from the snare and that these thresholds are pretty low So these are around negative 33 All right, so let's go to the multiband compressor now So pretty much if you think of multiband compressors more like an EQ tool not saying that it is like that in any way Just saying that if you think of it not by compression, but more like by by EQing making each band louder or quieter that might help you achieve what you're wanting to achieve. All they do here is they just go for the outputs. So I know I want more high frequencies, little less mid, and more low frequencies. So that, for me, balances this whole group out perfectly. So let's go ahead and A-B this now. So hopefully what you notice there is that really balanced out everything because before it seems like there was just too much mid, not enough lows, and it just felt very washy, just felt very sort of flat. And the way I use the multiband compressor was to kind of even it out and kind of make it feel a little bit more colored. So I said there were three things in this rack, so that's EQ filter section, compression section, and usually there might be sometimes a little bit of stereo imaging, but again, because I have bass and textures in here, I don't have that here. So that means the last section is just limiting. So 
I like this good old sausage fattener because it's a saturated limiter. We're not using any settings here. I just threw it on. It's purely just limiting at this point. So that's the whole group processing. So without this, everything just doesn't sound nearly as cool. So for example, So as you heard, it really, that group processing is so important and usually I might, for the EQ, have a channel strip there, which is something I have chosen to put on every individual layer instead, but um, let's get into this. So I renamed these two just right now so that this can be a little bit more clear because usually I have two chord groups. Um, I have a low chords and a high chords. Let's go ahead and play each of those so you can get an idea of what they're doing. let's talk about the ambient chords. So instead of having two massive tracks in my session, I just decided to have two massive instances inside of a instrument rack. So I can have two different patches, two different synths, two different instruments uh, inside of one of these instrument racks. So if I wanted, I could have 10 massives inside of this rack and it would all play the same MIDI and be processed with the same processing afterwards. All right, so let's talk about the processing real quick before we go into these individual massive layers. So what's going on here is I have a channel strip and a utility. So the utility part of this is really, really important because this is what's making uh, a little bit more space and a little bit adding, of course, some width to the chords. So I have two chords layers, like I said, a high and a low layer, and the low layers are my ambient euphoric chords. So I want those to be a little bit wider. So I just pan those out by 120%. And the high chords I actually reduced to 70%. So anyways, the reason why I make one chord wider and one less wide is because for anything to seem wide, by comparison, other things have to be not so wide. So it's kind of like having a really short friend stand next to a really tall friend. Uh, you know, the bigger that difference is, the more one thing seems bigger and one thing seems smaller. Or I guess in this case, with width, when we're talking about width, if we want things to seem wider, we have to make other things less wide because we can't have everything be wide, then nothing seems wide. So let's talk about the channel strip. So let's talk about what we're doing in the channel strip. So I'm low passing around 8.5K, so that way I'm making more space for other textures and melodies to kind of occupy what I'm cutting here. So I want my presence, those present frequencies that are really high up to kind of occupy this space. So I'm gonna cut this out of the chords and I do this on both my high and low chords. And of course, I'm high passing, getting rid of some low frequencies that I might not need. Um, and what I like about this channel strip is I also have a saturation knob. So um, I'm using a little bit of that. So instead of uh, making up on the output for anything I might do with compression or by cutting out stuff, I'm just saturating it more and it's making it louder. So it's pretty great. I love doing that instead of just adding more volume. And we're not really using the EQs yet. I didn't, I didn't really even get to using the EQs, but... I might just do very subtle things like a dB here, a dB there. And then I'm just doing a little bit of compression here around 3 dB of gain reduction. And of course I have some limiting. So that's what's going on there on the channel strip. So let's actually go take a step back and let's look at the massive uh, layers. So let's move on now to the bass. So the bass is actually very similar processing. Uh, we have two massive patches, which we'll get to in a sec. And then we have two sidechain compressors kind of repeating what was happening up here on the group, except now it's just down here again to kind of just reinforce the, the sidechain pump on the bass and make it feel much tighter. And after that, we have a auto filter, which is something I like to do. So sometimes I like to EQ or filter out a certain range of 
base, so I like to take out the 1 to 5k range, sort of just somewhere in there. I, I always do it by ear. And the reason why I like that is because it makes room for textures or melodies or chords to occupy that space, so I don't really need those bass frequencies there. So I'm going to just carve it out to make some more space for other things. And then we have the uh, the channel strip once more again, so we're just kind of cutting out a little bit less low frequencies, uh, cutting out around the same high frequencies, so I really don't need these frequencies in the bass, and saturating much harder. And then we're just gaining a, uh, the same amount of compression, so somewhere around negative 3 dB of gain reduction, and we're just limiting, so pretty much what you've seen so far. And then we have a utility just to kind of bring the width down to keep this bass mono, so we don't need this to be wide or anything. And it, that's the good thing about bass vocals and kicks and most drums is you'll want to keep them kind of mono so that you feel the punch right in your face. And then after that is just the sausage fatter just strictly for limiting. So as you can see, I'm not even using settings. If I wanted, I could add some fatness, um, but we don't need to. So let's look at the massive patches. So let's solo these and play them. And uh, just layering those two together at round, having the, the growly one a little bit lower is usually what I go for. So I think that's everything I need to talk about bass. It's actually kind of easy. So let's move on to textures. So the textures actually are very, very similar to everything else we've done, which shouldn't be a surprise. I kind of reuse channel strip settings, tweak them to every channel, and I just might do here different things here and there. But for the most part, that's kind of what it was cool about wanting to show this to you is that a lot of things are kind of repeated. So sidechain is repeated here and pretty much similar settings to the channel strip that you've seen everywhere else. So let's play the massive patch and I'll explain afterwards why I like using textures. The one thing I love about textures is that this certain one has a lot of noise as you can see and it has sort of a, of a kind of weird inharmonic sound so it adds a big sense of harmonics and kind of a euphoric pad on top of what's already kind of my euphoric chords okay so to show you how important textures are we're going to do an on and off of it with everything else so that way you can hear how important and what the textures are kind of doing to the overall picture and then after that we're going to do uh, we're going to turn off all the processing that I've shown you so far. So all the side chains, all the EQs, everything on the main group. We're going to turn all that stuff on and turn it back on so you can hear all the processing I've shown you on and off. And let's get started with that. I know it was a long, long video, and you guys probably wanted me to sound design like I originally wanted to do also, but as you can see, this video is long enough just without it. So we'll do that kind of stuff, but we'll now continue from here and do a writing sessions and melodic dubstep. So that will be really fun. We'll write chords, melodies, all sorts of stuff. So see you guys there. Thanks guys for watching, and of course, ladies.